to show you what we've done to update our stalls in our barn. We spent most of the afternoon working on building two new stall gates and setting a post and setting the, the hinge gate posts and those kind of things. And um, I'm going to show you a time lapse of what we built and I'll explain, I'll kind of voice over explain what we built and how we built it and then I'm going to show you what it looks like for now in the barn. Okay, so we started out with um, some 2x4s cut 4 foot and 35 and a half across and that was basically because that was what we had. We just split some 2x4s that we already had. An 8 foot stick that made the two 4 foot pieces and then another stick that was 35 and a half cut in half. Um, the door is 4 feet high and we see Jerry Jeremy just cut up some scabs basically to screw the boards together and so that's what he's doing he's just attaching those to the corners and screwing them in and then he toenails the corner in as well just for some extra stability. We used some cross supports on the first door that we made but we didn't have enough 2x4 left to do that on this door so we just created some small scabs out of some 6x1s that we had that were just scrap. The 6x1s had some nails in it so we couldn't use them all the way across as bracing. So it's just attaching those right now. And he used um, 2 inch screws for this part and then for the toenail he used a 3 inch screw to go in the corner of the board to the other board she's doing right now. She's kind of toenailing in with that 3 inch screw. And he, we pre-drilled most of those holes. This was old wood again that came out of an old shed, so we didn't want to split the wood. It had been sitting out for a while. I don't really know how old that shed was when we tore it down. So just being extra careful and making things easier. And you can see on this side how he scabbed that board across the corners. That's a pre drill. And with a two inch screw. That end. That's where he toenailed in. You can see those two boards together on that side. You can see that better. The, sorry, the bucket of hydraulic fluid is in the way on the other side. Again, same thing with the bracing on all four corners. Oh, and there went the post. Oh.
sorry, our table's on wheels, so occasionally the whole camera kind of moves as we accidentally move the table. solid we decided to use a cattle panel that goes across it and this was a piece of a probably a six or ten foot panel that we had that was bent and broken on one end and we just cut out the section to fit the door so it was a little bit more across than the 35 and a half inches just enough to kind of overlay the edge of the wood and then we used fence staples to attach it so he just cut me it down to fit the bolt cutters we use one panel for both doors and this is actually I think a hog panel because the panels at the bottom are smaller and that works really well for baby goats we we also fence stapled in some welded wire on the other side that's smaller. Um, we get hammering so hard that the, um, the hammer falls over so the clip's about to end. But yeah, that was basically the end of um, the video and what we finished at. I'll put in a picture of what the barn looked like or at least maybe a video clip. Thanks, Pops. We all needed to hear you screaming. She's so noisy. Um, and then a clip about the progression that we've made. So I've showed you guys the bunk beds that Jeremy built this one last weekend. And today he raised these up on some deck boards and some cinder blocks. And that seems to work out well, just to kind of give them some nice raised beds to sleep on. And then, of course, we have this table that we got at an auction for really cheap. And it's just really great. They like to sleep kind of up, and it's easier to keep clean. It's easy to muck out a barn, but when they waste tons of hay, it's just kind of hard. And our barn doesn't drain very well. Water kind of sits in here when it rains a lot. So we've really worked on getting these guys just elevated out of the water in any way we can. And so we've moved, for this used to be stalls that went across and then our common sleeping area was here. So now we changed to our two stalls, Daisy stop it, are in the back and our common sleeping area is kind of here in the front part of the barn. And so, as you can see, we have gates, but we don't have, like, any fencing or anything. So these are going to be our two kidding stalls. Um, sorry. I have this going on. Biting and licking my legs. Um, so what we did was we built these two doors, like you saw us build. And we installed these latches. Which I'm really excited about. They automatically close and the doors open like all the way out into the barn, which is nice. They swing, they're on a hinge, which is a lot better than what I had. And it just is going to make kidding and locking animals up so much easier. And so, what we're going to do is have water and feeders in both stalls, these kind of feeders, and then we'll have a hay feeder on this wall. A common hay feeder here and then attach a hay feeder over here for this stall so that we have three different areas where people can eat people I say people I mean goats I hope you guys know them where goats can eat oh I, I think Cece thinks she's stuck in there but I'm really excited so Jeremy set this post today while I was at the fair 
and we set these two posts. So this is just, it's just a big fence post and it's set about three feet into the ground, he said, and then there's some quick creek poured in there. These were a one eight foot four by four um, board that we cut in half and so they're about a foot, buried a foot and then set in concrete. Um, they were the only thing other than hardware that we actually bought. So this came out of an old barn and I'll try to find a picture of it. That was actually where the current milk barn is and the two by fours actually came out of a shed that we had, like a little storage shed that was here when we moved in that we took apart and I've said this stuff also came from that my nieces and nephew now have a playhouse made out of but this was the stuff that they didn't use. And this is an old cattle panel so this was probably a 10 foot panel. It's actually a swine panel. You can see it gets smaller down here at the bottom for pigs and we just cut it in half. Again, something that was left here on the farm. And then, what are you doing? She's nibbling on the wood. It's great. And then this welded wire we used when we used to have chicks and we raised chicks. And so that's really just to keep baby goats in. Um, Cause they have, they're tiny and they escape, don't they ladies? So I'm excited. Hay feeders are next and um, finishing out the walls. And then I'm probably going to move and do something different with this water setup. This hose is just busted and not very good. And these used to be on autofills, but because the hose is broken, they can't be. So I'm really excited. TC's chew in the post. It's ridiculous. So that's my update on my goat barn. We'll walk out here and see the whole thing maybe. So the two kidding stalls will be back there and then we'll still have all this common sleeping area and hay feeders in here. And this is just our stall barn. They also have this out here which is not in the best shape to be honest. It's a nice little lean too, and it stays pretty dry back there. We're gonna make some different styles of hay feeder, but this is just a pallet feeder um, that we made, and it has worked really well. They waste a lot of it, but they can't get in it, which is what I'm really working toward. But there's also a little outdoor sleeping area, and in the summer, for the most part, that's where they sleep. And even some nights, we used to have a big goat fort out here. And it was just made of pallets and it's just kind of falling apart. They used to sleep out there um, with the dog. I don't think they really worry as much. They just want to be up high. So it's kind of our sleeping arrangements. And then of course we milk in the indoor barn that we built two years ago. And it connects through here. I have this gate so I can lock out the non-milkers if I want to. And they go in this door and out this door usually, but lately we've just been going in and out one door. We milk inside. And this is a little IBC tote house that we have. Still haven't cleaned up the mess. Still trying to decide what, obviously I'm not gonna use the dog kennel, but what of this stuff I'm gonna use for the new stalls. We, this was a hay, it was actually, from when we raised meat birds, it was a creep feeder. It's upside down. But you put the feed in this part and it creeped down into this, it was flipped over. Um, it was not good. It did not work very well. Hi Tinker. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of a little barn update for you. Okay, so before we go in, let's give you a little toony update. Hi, June. She's learned her name, so she knows to come at least when she hears my voice, which is good. Porkchop's kind of settling down. He is starting to share food, contrary to that behavior. He let her share the milk tonight, which was nice. Didn't you? Kind of a stinker. All right, Tooney. We'll see you later, kiddo. Good night, boys. 
All right, guys, that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching us make some new stall gates for our barn and an update on the goat barn and how we're remodeling it to work better for us in the spring when we have kids and just for segregation of the goats in general. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that little notification bell so that you get notified every time I put out a new video. Thanks guys. See you next time.